Welcome to another video. Have you ever heard the word kink or cusp? Yeah, it has to do with the behavior of certain functions and all absolute value functions, all piecewise functions, not all piecewise functions, all absolute value functions have a kink or a cusp. And if you notice the thumbnail for this video, there was a kink and there was a cusp. And the reason is because there's an elbow or there's a sharp corner or there is the intersection or the meeting of a curve and a straight line or two straight lines or two curves. Whenever that happens, you say there's a kink or there's a cusp, depending on which one you're dealing with. So I'm going to explain to you that when a function has a cusp or a kink, you cannot differentiate that function at that point, just at that point. Now, it could have derivative, it has a derivative, it just does not have um, a derivative at that point because it's impossible to determine what the derivative of the function is at that point, and I'm gonna show you why. Um, I'm gonna do it algebraically, I'm gonna show you graphically, and I'm also gonna show you analytically which would be the third way I'm going to show you that a kinky function cannot be differentiated at the kinky point. Let's get into the video. So before I get into this, I just want you to make sure you are subscribed to this channel. Make sure you like this video, leave a comment in the comment section and what else is there? Share the video. In a previous video, I showed you how to find the derivative of an absolute value function. If you don't know it, watch this video. Generally, when you look at a, an absolute value function and you want to differentiate it, the derivative of this function is f prime of x. It is equal to the derivative of this function normally, right, which is just going to be 2x multiplied by this function itself, which is x squared minus one, divided by the, the same function, the absolute value of x squared minus one. So this is the derivative of this function. It is just applying the chain rule. So if I ask you to differentiate this function, it is basically this, two x times this over this. Now, you, you, you notice that this and this are the same. The problem is, this is not always this. It depends on whether this is less than zero or greater than zero. I explained in that video, so watch it. Now, let's look at this. If this is the derivative of f of x, can I always find the derivative? No, because this expression will become a problem if the denominator is zero. And we know that this is gonna be zero whenever x equals one or minus one. And those are the two points where the kink or the cusps occur. Because this is a quadratic, it doesn't have a kink. A kink is always between two straight lines. A cusp is between two curves or between a curve and a straight line. So in this case, because this is a curve, so what does the graph look like? We're gonna have the graph of x squared minus one absolute value is gonna look like this. The roots of this function are supposed to be uh, minus one and one. So let's make this minus one, let's make this one. So typically this graph is supposed to go this way. That's the graph of x squared minus one. But because of the absolute value signs, the negative parts are not allowed to be to exist because the absolute value bar will convert it into a positive so this part now goes instead of it coming down here it goes up here so this part does not exist anymore so this is what the actual graph of the absolute value of x squared minus one looks like you notice that there's a problem here because there is the meeting of a straight line and a curve this is what you call a cusp and this also is a cusp so there are two points on this graph where the derivative where the, the, the function is not differentiable or the derivative is undefined 
Why would you say it's undefined? It doesn't go to infinity and there's no hole there. It is still undefined. I'm going to show you graphically now, but let's go back here. So we know that f prime of x algebraically here is undefined. for x equals minus 1 or x equals 1. For these two values, which are actually the kinky points, I like to call them the kinky points, the derivative does not exist or is undefined because you can't plug in 1 here. You can plug in 1 anywhere else, but in the denominator there's going to be a problem because there's going to be 1 minus 1, 0, the absolute value of 0 is 0, but you're dividing something by zero, not allowed, okay? And if, you, if it was the same thing, if it was minus one, it's the same problem. So it is not differentiable at the two points where the kinks or the cusps occur, okay? So I've shown you. Now, what if I didn't know how to differentiate? And all I know is this graph. How can I show that this is not differentiable just looking at the graph? Okay, this is it. Remember that the derivative of a function, or when we say a function is differentiable, we want to find the slope, we look for the tangent. We start moving the secant line closer to the point, and then whatever secant line has the same slope as the tangent, um, becomes the secant line becomes a tangent at that point. Look at this case. So let's say you have this graph here, and you draw a secant line. And we move the secant line up here. And we move the secant line up again. And we move the secant line up again. At some point, it's going to get to this point where it becomes the tangent. The slope of the tangent is the slope of the secant line. And we say whatever slope this tangent has, that is the derivative of this function at that point. That's the limiting value that we're getting because these slopes could be different depending on the values that we're getting on the, on the curve. But at this point, that becomes the limiting value of the, the rate of change or the differentiation or the slope, and that becomes our dy dx. The problem with a kink, watch this. If this was a kink, I have a curve that goes this way, and then this comes this way. Okay, now that's a cusp at this point. Let's do the same thing. I draw this. I'm, remember, I'm going to this point. If I draw this again, okay, I keep moving closer and closer, and eventually I'm going to get here. And I can confidently claim that this, the slope of this line, whatever the slope is, is the same thing as the slope of the function I'm dealing with, which is correct. But somebody else shows up and says, hey, I don't want this secant line. I want my secant line to go like this. So, he keeps going closer to the point. Do you think he's going to find another tangent that is parallel to the secant line? Yes. Uh-oh. Now we have two tangents at the same point with different slopes. Which one are we going to pick as the actual slope of the function at that point? We don't know. Somebody else comes up and says, I want my tangent lines to go like this and finds another one at that point. So there are infinitely many tangents at a kinky point. And that's the main problem with any point. In fact, it is worse if the lines are straight. Watch, if this, this is the graph of, let's, let's get the graph of absolute value of x. And then you will see that, let's put it here. So many graphs. Let's do this. Look, this is the graph of f of x equals absolute value of x. How many tangents do you think you can place here? A billion? No. Infinitely many tangents. Okay? Because... I can say that this is actually my first tangent at that point. It is correct. I can claim this is a tangent. I can claim the tangent is horizontal. I can claim the tangent is this one or this one. As far as this point is concerned, there are infinitely many tangents that can fit there. So which of those tangents represents 
the, the tangent that determines the slope of the function at that point. You don't know. And that's the major reason why any function that has a kink or that has a, a cusp, this, remember this is a cusp, and this is what you call a kink. The third condition, which is a function intersecting itself, I don't want to talk about it because then it is no longer a function. It will break the vertical, um, it can no longer pass the vertical line test. So I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about things that still look like functions. They are actually functions because they pass the vertical line test, yet they cannot be differentiated at some point. Listen, they can be differentiated they just cannot be differentiated at certain points. And those points are the points where they have the cusp or the kink. Make sense? Okay, so I've shown you now algebraically that this is not defined at x equals minus one or one for this case. I've also showed you, shown you graphically that you have too many tangents at that point and therefore you cannot decide which of the tangents is the slope of the, of the graph or the, the derivative of the function. So. Let's now do it as if we want to use the definition of the derivative and we're just going to use a simple function f of x equals absolute value of x. Let's do it. This is the mission. Show that f of x equals absolute value of x is not differentiable at x equals zero. Why did we pick x equals zero? Because that's where the kink is. Okay, look, if you sketch the graph of y equals x equals zero, it's gonna look like this. So the elbow, the corner, the pointed corner is right here at x equals zero and that's where there's a problem. If we change this function, it would be a different thing. So we wanna show that this function is not differentiable at this point, it's a point of interest. Now what is the definition of the derivative of a function? By definition, f prime of x, let's say at a, the derivative of this function at a, or let's just do zero. Let's, let's do a first, is equal to the limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a over x minus a. Okay, so remember there are two definitions for the derivative. It's either derivative at a point or the one where you use as h goes to zero and that's the universal one. But now because this derivative is particular to a point, I'm using this other uh, definition. I think this is definition one. And then we have definition two, which is the universal one. So here, in this case, since a equals zero, in this case, we're gonna say that f prime of a, uh, sorry, at zero, is equal to the limit as x goes to zero of f of x minus f of zero over x minus zero. Here comes the problem. Here comes the problem. What is f of x? Remember that all absolute value functions are piecewise functions. You're gonna go here and recall that, let's go, let's do it here. Recall that f of x is equal to x for all values of x greater than or equal to zero, and it is negative x for all values of x less than zero. So whenever you want to use f of x in a function, you have to decide which one you're working with. But now we don't actually have a function. We're dealing with as x goes to zero. Well, this x is also approaching zero, but it's coming from the left. This is approaching zero, it's coming from the right. So let's assume we're taking it from the right, okay? So we're gonna say that this is equal to the limit as x goes to zero of f of x now will be x minus, what is f of zero? We're gonna plug in zero into this function. When x equals zero, this is just gonna be zero, okay? Oh, sorry, I said f of x is gonna be x minus zero over x minus zero. Well, that is the limit as x goes to zero of x over x, which is equal to one, okay? Because x over x is one, the limit as x goes to zero of one is just one, okay? And that's it. 
But that's because we chose this function. If we decide to choose the other function, also, f prime at 0 is equal to the limit as x goes to 0 of this minus x minus 0 over x minus 0, which is equal to the limit as x goes to 0. What is this? This is just minus x over x, which is minus 1. Okay. Um, the derivative, if you're coming from the right, is positive. Obviously, as you can see, this is a positive slope. But the derivative, if you're coming from the left towards 0, is minus 1. That never happens for a differentiable function. It doesn't matter what direction you're coming from, the derivative at a point is consistent. So as you can see, the derivative of this function is 1, it is also minus 1. Whenever things like that happen at the same point, you just ignore it because that is, you, you can't do that. It has to be one particular thing and the problem is because it's a piecewise function. I just, I made this video so you could have a better understanding of why some functions at some point cannot be differentiated. And that's a rare thing unless, remember, every function can be differentiated. They just cannot be differentiated at certain points, even though they're continuous. So this is a case where a function is continuous everywhere, yet it is not differentiable everywhere. It is not differentiable when there's a cusp or when there is a kink. So we can say, um, we can say that the derivative at x equals zero is inconsistent. Therefore, f of x equals absolute value of x is not differentiable. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.